Greetings, Stellarissians. Today's letter is C, Calamitous Birth. I hate this origin because it's boring and it forces you to play Lithoids. I'm playing on the 3.9 beta, which makes it a little bit better, but it's still boring. The usual spicy settings. For any hive build these days, if you're planning to cheese leaders, you'll want to buy minerals to start a sensorium site immediately. Otherwise, you'll struggle to finish aptitude before year 5. One of two nice things about this origin is the special colony ships, which only cost minerals and build twice as fast. They let you get your colonies rolling really early, which is going to be important because we're lithoids, so pop growth is an issue. Try to hire a governor with two ranks of environmental engineer, or just one if you can't get it and then level them up. The usual leader abuse shenanigans are afoot. Here is the second good thing about this origin, and why I took volatile excretions. Turn on volatile land clearance and plug in your environmental engineer governor, and you can remove these buried lithoid blockers for just 400 minerals. Your capital starts with a few of these, and every colony you make with the meteorite starts with two, so you can get a bunch of free pops. Today I'm making a modest number of corvettes. This is a new special event with 3.9. You get this crippling debuff on your planet until you research the special project with the construction ship. When you do research it, it unlocks a situation where you can feed the kaleidoscope. I have a stack of energy credits, so I'm just going to go for the expensive one. I really like watching the fleet power rise when I let out all the ships at once. Big fleet means the AI are frightened, and frightened AIs means vassals. You get some pretty good rewards from the kaleidoscope situation, like that was a whole bunch of physics research. And when the situation concludes, this is one of two results. In this case, the consumer goods are pretty useless for Hive. More vassals means more resources, which means more fleet, which means more vassals. Being a hive mind that isn't pretended to hive, I can't release sectors as vassals. So to form a federation, I'll have to butter up this AI until they say yes. And of course, before the federation is formed, the AI vassals will always find a way to drag you into some stupid war for no reason. I white pieced out because I really don't care about the AI's wars, and now I can form the federation, and immediately kick them out, so I can vassalize them again. 2236, not bad at all, most of the galaxy under my lithoid heel. Now that's interesting. He spawns so rarely, I don't think I've ever seen him spawn so early, but he's all the way over here, so it's not really my problem. This, however, is my problem. I mean, sort of. They're all the way over here, it'll take literal years for those fleets to reach me. I see the Khan is having a fun time over there, still not my problem. After five years, the rebels' fleets have finally arrived. I could fight them, but that's risky. They have a pretty good navy, and if I lose many ships, it'll make my other vassals disloyal, and then they might all gang up on me. I'm just going to peace out and then come get them later. The Khan really is having a good time this game. Cybernetic means I can start assimilating non-hive-minded pops, which is going to be real nice. I told you it wasn't my problem. Now the Khan's old subjects have formed a federation. And they're all immediately leaving the federation, so I can vassalize them too. This is a magnificent galaxy, other than those two chumps on the east. But I just declared war on them, so they're going to join the party soon. I turned as many vassals as I could into scolariums, but a couple of them turned pathetic and automatically became protectorates. The two chumps surrendered and joined the party, and the galaxy is pristine. It's that stage of the game where the Fallen Empires start declaring silly wars, but this one really isn't any kind of threat to me anymore. Ooh! Ah, this, this, this'll be fun. At least they're far away from my home planet. I'm gonna just have to leave my vassals at the mercy of that Fallen Empire, but they're actually holding out surprisingly okay for once. I have just enough fleet power that I'm confident I can hold the line here and keep the Unbidden from expanding too much, so long as I only take on one fleet at a time. These are some really close fights. They're pretty early and I wasn't entirely ready, but I'm holding the hot gates. Another Fallen Empire woke up and declared a total war on me. Unfortunately for them, they are a joke to be mine now. This is all going to take a while. It rep, the Unbidden broke the containment and went a bit ham. So ham that their two buddies, the Vehement and Aberrant, have spawned, and I've never even seen them in a game before. 
I usually kill them before this. You may well notice that the Unbidden spawned 54 years ago, and I have almost finished them off now. They left one hell of a scar in the galaxy, I have to say, as well as my psyche. I have been fighting them for seven hours, and I have destroyed so many Unbidden ships. Over 3,000. Now, those 3.9 million fleets consist of 28 ships, so the average fleet power per ship is 139k. That means, having destroyed 3,000 ships, I have destroyed in total 417 million fleet power worth of Unbidden. And that doesn't even factor in the Aberrant Overhuman over human either. At long last, I get to kick them out of my galaxy. Goodbye, my friends. That's a lot of unity. Alright, I'm done. I have 37 million fleet power, and it's growing at a rate of 2 mega shipyards. All my vassals are on max taxes, and I'm on repeatable rank 60. Subsequent crises will just fall over straight away, there won't be any challenge, I've won. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below about your favourite flavour of crisp. Join me next time for...